Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to teach a robot a delay statement, which allows you to delay the execution of a robot's program during a simulation. To get started, let's load a robot in the 3D world. So I'll go to the eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, I'll expand Robots, scroll down, click Visual Components, and then I'll add a generic articulated robot to the 3D world origin, which you can see right here. Let's now go to the Program tab, and use the jaw command to select the robot, like so. And let's now teach that delay statement. So in the program editor panel, I'm working in the main routine of the robot. In the statements toolbar, I'll click delay statement. And notice the tooltip, it executes a time delay in seconds. So that's the units we're working with. And in the statement properties panel, I'll set the delay to be two seconds. But you can, you know, use milliseconds if you want to. So I could just type in, you know, 0 0.5 if I wanted to. But in this case, I'll use two seconds. And after the delay happens, let's move the robot down here. So I'll teach this location as a point-to-point -point motion statement. So in the program editor panel, I'll click point-to-point -point motion statement. So we'll first have the delay, and the robot goes to P1. Let's now reset the simulation, so the robot starts with this initial joint configuration. And if I run it, see the robot does not do anything for two seconds, and then it goes down to P1. Let's go ahead and reset. And in some cases, you want to use a delay statement when you're you know, sending or receiving signals in the robot. And I'll give you a very quick example that you can then use to you know, learn more about how you can use delays. So I'll first go to the Home tab. And now I'll build a simple layout that kind of feeds a part to a conveyor. And we have a motor attached to the conveyor that the robot can turn on and off to control when the path of the conveyor is moving. So in the eCatalog panel, I will collapse robots. And under Models by Type, I'll select Feeders. I'll then add a basic feeder to the 3D world. I'll now add and connect a conveyor to this interface shown on the feeder. So under Models by Type, I'll expand Conveyors, click Visual Components, and I'll add a simple conveyor, which is this item here. So I'll drag it into the 3D world, and then use the PMP command to plug the conveyor into the feeder. I'll now add a conveyor motor, which I can attach to this conveyor to control when parts move or stop. So in the catalog panel, I'll collapse Conveyors. I'll then click Processors, and notice we have this item here called Conveyor Motor. So I'll drag that into the 3D world. And this component has a special type of interface that allows you to connect it to a component and attach itself to that component's path. So the PMP command is active. I can now drag the conveyor motor towards the conveyor. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> All right. And we can see the green arrow shows up. So it lets me know I can connect this conveyor motor to this conveyor. And if I move the conveyor closer, I'm sorry, the motor close enough, notice that it's now connected to the conveyor and attached to its path, which is indicated by this blue arrow. So uh, with the PMP command still active, I can now move the motor to a different distance along this conveyor's path. So let's actually move it to the start. And you can see you get an indication here that this red dot, that means the motor is turned off. So if I was to run a simulation, you can see the part is created. It's fed to the conveyor, but it doesn't move along the conveyor because right now the path is turned off. So to turn the path on, let's reset the simulation and now program the robot. So we'll wire a signal in the motor to the robot, and the robot can then send out a signal to turn the path on and off. So I'll go to the Program tab, Jaw command is active, and I can now work with the robot. And let's change up this program a bit. So in the Program Editor panel, I'll first delete P1. I still have the delay, but let's actually delete that as well. And we'll start fresh. So what we first want to do is wire the signal in the motor to the robot. So in the Show group, I'll select the Signals checkbox here. And we can see the Signal Editor for the robot, its inputs and its outputs. And notice that the motor has a compatible Boolean signal so indicated by this icon. So I'll click the Unfold button, and you can see the motor has a motor signal. I'll then point to this red circle, hold down the left mouse button, drag the pointer away to display a wire, and I'll now wire a connection in this signal to the outputs of the robot. So I'll drag it there. The green check mark make, makes me know that I can connect this signal to the output of the robot. And it's set to zero right now in the robot, so I actually want to change that. So I'll click here to edit, and let's actually map this to signal 50 in the robot. Because by default, signals 1 through 48 are mapped to perform uh, grasp and release actions and other type of actions in the robot. So f signals 50 and onwards are good to go. So I have signal 50 set up here. I'll click Change. And now that motor signal is wired to signal 50 in the robot. So now the robot can send out a signal to set the value of the motor. So let's actually hide these signal editors. So I'll go back to the Show group and clear these signals checkbox here. And let's now use a set binary output statement. And right now it's set to out port 0. So remember that signal is mapped to 50 in the robot. So I'll set output port to 50 in the statement properties panel. And we want to turn the path on, so I'll set I'll 
select the output value checkbox here and if I reset and run the simulation notice that now the parts move along the conveyor's motor and we see that green button there indicates that the path is turned on. So now let's all go ahead and create a delay to turn the path off after we've already turned it on. So I'll reset, I'll add a delay statement to the main routine, let's do a delay of 5 seconds and then we'll go ahead and turn the path off. So I'll add another set binary output statement and for output port we're working with that port of 50 and for the output value we're going to leave this checkbox uh, cleared so the value will be false and if I run the simulation you see at the start the path is turned on and after about five seconds yep the path is now turned off alright this concludes the video if you have any more questions you can visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com and I hope you have a wonderful day